Senator Mackenzie. Thank you very much, Chair. I just briefly want to speak for 10 minutes um, as on an area that I am very, very no concerned of, around the demonisation of hunters that is currently going on uh, at a frenzied rate within our society and our communities. Aboriginals have hunted across Australia for over 20,000 years. Europeans have brought the grand traditions from uh, hunting communities in Italy, in, right in France, in Britain, right across Europe to our communities. And this allowed our new settlers to provide food for their communities and their families. And yet we have seen the constant demonisation of hunting and hunters. And I, what brought this to my attention, I think most recently, was obviously what occurred to uh, Glenn McGrath. On social media, he was one of our greatest sporting heroes. His contribution through his, uh, his foundation in, as a result of his wife's death from breast cancer has been absolutely appalling. And the types of headlines that have been used, uh, such as implicated in hunting scandal, the type of language that we as a community and the Sydney Morning Herald and others have chosen to frame this public debate in is absolutely abhorrent. And I, it also brings me back to another issue, I guess, that I've raised briefly in, in this place, and it was when the young, the real model, Axel, had her contract cancelled by the real simply for participating in a legal recreational activity um, and being a hunter, essentially. It is absolutely abhorrent. These are legal activities. They are celebrated. They are cultural practices. They have historic values. And over a million Australians are registered hunters, and that doesn't go to the sporting area. 46,000 game hunters within my own home state of Victoria. The social, people, the social media campaign against Glenn McGrath, uh, where people were actually saying, don't support his charity, I think, uh, friends, please stop donating. Um, high time celebs like Glenn McGrath realise that hunting evokes as much public revulsion as harpooning whales. Uh, you're just a sick, cowardly psychopath. Lady Elise says he's an ungood person, a vilesome person. Um, I think that we just need to really start considering how this impacts on real people, their real lives. And it is actually a result of social uh, do-gooders, of animal rights activists, of people who are of an elitist bent that think that they, how they envisage the world should be is actually how it should be. And they're going to persecute those who participate in incredibly legal pastimes. The majority of Australians live in cities, and they do their hunting and gathering in supermarkets. But in prior generations, we had a general store, and you used to have to walk around a few to get all your gear. Um, prior to that, we were basically self-sufficient. Um, we might have had a small plot of land. Uh, we would have used a variety of tools to go and help us hunt. Uh, game to get our protein and we would have gathered our carbohydrates. And I think this is actually as kin to being a human being as the fight and flight response. This has developed over millennia, millennia. It is in our very DNA, our desire to hunt and gather. And over, I think another point to make is of, of the world's 7.5 billion people, 2 billion survive on less than $2 a day, and they depend on hunting. They depend on hunting to actually provide food and sustenance for their families. Are we going to now say that those people are somehow vile and repulsive simply because they need food to survive? I think that there are incredible conservation benefits from hunting. It brings economic and social and environmental benefits, um, and that is recognised worldwide through international conventions and the like. $200 million a year to New Zealand. Um, $200 million a year is what Af is delivered to the African economy as a result of trophy hunting. $200 million a year to the poorest continent in our world. And that actually flows right through uh, not only the national economy, but right down onto the ground to villages, 
who are doing conservation projects, who are managing animals in a way that is sustainable. That is sustainable. It is a social practice, has social values. And as Senator Muir uh, referred to today in his uh, opening speech, what he likes to do and what he values and what's important to his family and his community and his history and identity is not valued by those in Brunswick or Richmond or increasingly um, Flemington. Uh, indeed, it is the inner urban elites that are deriding Senator Muir's way of life and, and the things he likes to participate in and enjoy, and indeed hunters as well. They are arrogant in their dismissal of our, this way of life, the animal rights protagonists. Uh, they are purporters of moral superiority, which we wouldn't allow to exist in any other way. They're elitist in their derision of the lifestyle. They, they cannot believe uh, that anyone would choose to participate in this practice, and they are um, discriminatory in the way they behave and attack um, their fellow human beings. In the Victorian economy, hunting alone produces $430 million, uh, 1,500 jobs, direct employment, and most of those out in the regions. So hunting and shooting actually provides an incredible economic, environmental and social benefit to our community. And it's about time that we bell the cat on those people who think they're morally superior and choose to denigrate and deride people participating in a legal, historic and cultural practice that has been celebrated for a um, century and indeed is part of our DNA, very DNA as human beings. Thank you.